Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about how you can design a deployment pipeline using GitOps principles. So if you're looking into designing a deployment pipeline or just want to learn a little bit more about GitOps, this is going to be the video for you. Now this video takes place after my last video, which was how to design a CI-CD pipeline. So if you're not sure how to design a CI-CD pipeline, make sure that you watch my previous video. I'll leave a link down below in the description. Now let's go ahead and get started with the design of our GetOps pipeline. All right, so here you can see that we have a pretty simple CI-CD pipeline. This pipeline takes our application code stored in our application repository, takes it through the source, build, test, and release stage, and basically the output is going to be a container image. And that container image is stored in our registry. So you can see we have our application right here, and it's version 1.0. So where do we go from here? This is where we need a continuous deployment pipeline to actually take this application image and bring it over to our different environments. So the first thing that we wanna do when designing our deployment pipeline is create a second repository to house our configurations. So our CI CD pipeline is going to check out code from our application repo, but our deployment pipeline is gonna use our configurations from our configuration repo. So this is a traditional GitOps pipeline. So let's create another repo here, and then we'll call it config repo. And this config repo is gonna contain all the configuration files that we need for deploying our application. So this could be anything from like Docker Compose files to Kubernetes manifests. So let's go ahead and populate this config repo with some manifest files. So I'm gonna put a Kubernetes manifest file here. And let's just think about what would be in this manifest. So in this manifest, we would probably have something like a Kubernetes deployment. So we'll call it deployment. And this deployment, probably uses an image and the image it's going to use is going to be the image from our CI CD pipeline. So we called it my app and we'll just tag it with uh, v1.0. Now let's just move this out of the way and get an environment for us to deploy to. So we have our server here and this could be any type of server. We'll just call it our test slash QA environment. Now your GitOps pipelines can deploy to your environments in two different models. The first model is known as the push model. So we'll call this push. Now the push model is really simple. It's as simple as just doing something like a cube control apply. So we're just gonna keep it as that for now. And then I'm gonna discuss the pull model, which is the more modern approach of actually having an operator installed in your environment that pulls down your configurations. So let's talk a little bit about how this pipeline gets triggered in the first place. So your deployment pipeline should be triggered automatically at the end of your CI CD pipeline. So let's draw an arrow here from our CI CD pipeline because it's gonna trigger our deployment pipeline as soon as it's done completing. Now, every time you run your CI CD pipeline, it should be churning out a new version of your application. So you can see here we have version one of our application and the next time we run our pipeline, we're gonna get version 1.1. Now, if you have a really well-designed pipeline, what you may want your pipeline to do is to actually go into your configuration repository and submit a pull request or just push a change to it to actually update the image. So here, I'm gonna update the image tag to v1.1 and all my deployment pipeline really needs to do is rerun kube control apply and that's going to deploy it to my test and QA environment. Now once the code is actually running in your environment, you should have some observability tools plugged in to monitor your application. So at the very least, you should have something like Prometheus to scrape metrics from your applications. And then you should have something like Grafana so your QA teams can actually visualize the changes and make sure things like the latency hasn't increased and all your key performance indicators are up to snuff. Now, once your deployment has been running in your test and QA environment for some time, 
What's next is to promote it to your other environments. So usually you'll have something like a staging environment and a production environment. So staging environments are usually just environments that are similar to production. It's where you send your deployments first and you're basically pretending it's production. You sort of treat it like production, uh, but it's not production. And then production, of course, is where your live code runs. This is where the customers are accessing your applications. So let's draw some arrows to these environments here. And the way that these environments get pushed to is they can automatically get pushed to by your GitOps pipeline, or these can be manually gated by a person. So sometimes companies aren't comfortable with having everything automatically trigger to their staging and production environments. Usually they want an engineer to actually run the pipeline manually. So these ones might be manually or automatically triggered. Let's now talk about the pull model, and then I'll get into canary testing, which is a common thing that's done in production environments. So with the pull model, I'm just gonna take these arrows and I'm just gonna change the direction since they are pulling their configurations and deployments down from our configuration repo. So instead of CICD server doing a cube control apply, they would have what's known as an operator installed in them. So if this is our Kubernetes cluster, then we would have something like Argo CD installed into each of our clusters. And basically what Argo CD does is it just checks your repository and it checks the state of your clusters. And if it notices if the state is different in your clusters than it is in your configuration repo, then it tells you it's out of sync. Now it can automatically sync your environments for you or it can be manually triggered again. So you may have your test and QA and even your staging environments do what's known as an auto synchronization through something like Argo CD. And then you can have your production environment where someone actually needs to click the button to sync the environment. So Argo CD is really simple to set up actually. And basically you just point it to your GitOps repository and then it just checks your configurations. If anything's out of sync, it'll help you sync it. I do have a full length video on how to set up and get started with Argo CD. So if you're interested in working with Argo CD, make sure to check that out. I have a link in the description below. Let's now talk about Canary deployments, which is something you should absolutely introduce into any deployment pipeline. So let's talk about how our user actually talks to our application. So we got some users here. And those users usually talk to our application, not directly, but they talk through what's known as a load balancer. So the load balancer is going to load balance traffic to our application. So our application is running under a Kubernetes pod. So we'll just say, this is my app v1.0, and then we'll say my app v1.1. In a traditional Canary deployment, what would happen is you would have both of the applications deployed, but at the start, it would send 100% of the traffic to your original application. So we'll say 100% there and then 0% here. And then gradually, the traffic will be moved over to the new version of your application. So maybe you do it in increments of 10%. So you go 90% there, 10% there, and then eventually you go 80% to 20%, and you sort of get the idea. Basically, you're drifting the traffic from the old version to the new version until eventually you have 100% of the traffic going there and you can just cut off all the traffic to version one and remove that from your environment. And you just keep doing this for all your new releases. Now, if you're using something like Argo rollouts in Kubernetes, it would look more like this. Uh, this would be actually your rollout object. Uh, if you're familiar with Kubernetes, a rollout is basically just a deployment and a deployment is something that creates your pods, which is basically just your containers. So the rollout object 
project would run a certain number of pods for your version one of the application, and then a certain number of pods for version 1.1. And then as the rollout progresses, it would basically add new pods running the new version of the application and then remove old pods running the old version until eventually all the pods are gone in version one and they're all running in the new version. All right, so I hope this video was helpful on getting to know and understand GetOps and deployment pipelines. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. I know these deployment pipelines can be a little bit confusing at first, especially if you're coming from just designing CI CD pipelines, which are pretty much the same no matter which organization you work for. All the stages are sort of the same, but with deployment pipelines, it's really going to be customized to your environment and how your company functions. So make sure to ask some questions below and check out the other videos linked in the description below. I'll have all my Argo related videos that goes over Argo CD as well as one for Argo rollouts. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.